He's the astronomer who thinks that the aliens have buzzed the Earth. Yeah. Yes. So he was on a podcast, uh, H3 podcast, which is a pretty popular live stream podcast. Anyway, I was listening to it and he made kind of a classic claim about the scientific community. I wanted to get your okay. reaction to it. Right, let's take a look. You think. All right. Let's take a um, listen and Because look. one of the biggest traumatic experiences I had as a kid was coming to the dinner table, asking a difficult question, and then seeing the adults in the room dismissing the question because they didn't know the answer. And I thought that by becoming a scientist, I would figure out the answer myself. You know, I don't need to pretend that I know more. We can just be guided by evidence. That's the way science is done. But unfortunately, it's really strange. But even within science, the practitioners want to maintain an image of an adult, the mm -hmm. adult in the room, mm -hmm. to pretend they know more than they actually know and to avoid collecting evidence because that would be a reputation risk if it turns out that it violates what they said initially. Uh, also, it, if it's something really new, uh, it would imply that as experts, they did not anticipate it. Mm -hmm. So they would rather argue Oumuamua must have been a rock of a type that we've never seen before because that's natural. Keeps them the expert. They, Keeps them as yeah, experts. Yeah. It's just that, you know, it's a natural object from a, another type. You know, there are different types of rocks, not, not a problem. So as we're... We yeah, it's bullshit. Yeah, what about <laughs> what about peer review? Peer review is supposed to deal with that shit. Yeah, if you're afraid of evidence and and stuff, you know. Um, you know this. We see this all the time, and obviously there are, there are degrees, right? But you have a hypothesis that is, you know, it's in the minority. Let's just say it may be a little bit out there. Doesn't necessarily mean that it's wrong. And it's not immediately embraced by the scientific community because it's, you know, it's an it's an odd hypothesis. You have two options. You start complaining about the scientific community, somehow trying to make it seem like you're being persecuted in some way or dismissed or they're they're defending their turf or they're closed minded yeah. or whatever. Or you sort of knuckle down and you prove your hypothesis as best as you can. If it's if it turns out to be correct and if it turns out to be wrong, you freaking accept that it's wrong. Yeah. Right. That's it. You know, there's no justification for responding to a completely appropriate skepticism about your wacky idea as I'm being unfairly dismissed or persecuted rather than, dude, you don't have it. You did not bring the evidence. You have a hypothesis. You don't have the evidence to support that hypothesis. And your logic is a little hinky. It is not quite it is not quite there. It's a and big oh yeah. Embrace no, like the skeptic. Embrace the the pushback and the skepticism. You have to either you have to embrace right. it and and meet it and learn from it and deal with it. But if you complain about it, that is the long slide into pseudoscience yep. and crankery. And, uh, gosh, you, you have, have to know that going into, into a crank. Too. Yeah, and that we, we see what you. Lead. That's why that lead is, to that, any place good. The interviewer was literally just sitting there nodding his head and it had nothing to add to the conversation, nothing to say. I, I oh. just I hate shit like that. It's like, let's just give some asshole a platform. Yeah. That's what my, that's what I my podcast say, is. Are we inviting He's, him onto the skeptics guys? Well, is that what you're saying, cool. Jay? He, yeah. he usually does have some knowledge of the thing and pushes back, but I just think oh, he's, he's out of, he's out he of his wheelhouse of skeptical thinking. Anyway. Yeah, skeptical. He's not a critical thinker. He's a, he's a perfectly reasonable scientist who has a fringe theory. Um, and he's just not responding well. We need to help. Well. We, we, need to help. To we need to help him. He's, I mean, I've read, I've read a lot of his stuff and he's, he's, he's interesting and smart and, and covers things that I find worth talking yeah. about on the show. But this, you know, seems like a sacred cow yeah. uh, scenario for him. Yeah, I'm hoping also, you think about it. It's like this now is his issue. You know what I mean? Would we know who this guy was if it weren't for this issue? Yeah. He'd be I some would. anonymous well, astronomer publishing in the literature that nobody cares about outside we, of. We covered him for years. We've, we've, because I've covered of this. His stuff. No. Yeah. 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 I've, I've covered news items and papers and things that he has done on the show for years before Oma, okay, my, but my, but not my, enough that we would remember his name. I I did. It's a very memorable name. All I'm right, just I saying, did. it's not. I, I knew this <laughs> guy. Sorry, I knew this guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's. But this a, is a completely yeah. different level. It's you know, yet another example of, of of a scientist who's talking out of their expertise, and and immediately falls right off the rails. Right, because when you're not an expert, you really shouldn't be talking about it. Plus, he must but, have he he must have by now have read all the criticism aimed his way about what he's saying 
And yeah. he, he has, I don't know, has he addressed that? Has he, has he, has he brought that into his calculations and, and made some he assessment does, of actually, it? He does actually in this podcast. I mean, it's, I don't want to you know, necessarily pr promote somebody else, but they, they talk for like two hours and he does kind of like hand wave it away. Like, yeah. they don't want to give me funding or, mm. you know, they're coming up with other ideas, but they couldn't come up with a solution, but I did. But it's like okay, but that's not really evidence. I mean, yeah, I don't know. but it's like an astrology solution. Right. But Jay, he's not he's out of his. Something. He's not out of his. This is that's not the right. That's not the right um, diagnosis. He is not out of his area of expertise. This is he is it. simply he is an astronomer dealing with an right. astronomical question. He simply is you know, operating on the fringe. You know, he came up with a with a hypothesis that you know on its face, you know, you know Occam's razor would say, whoa, you know. We we need to rule out the thousand uh, you know more likely explanations first. Right. Extraordinary is evidence. That, he's not an astronomer, Steve. He's a theoretical oh, physicist. No, I thought he was an astronomer. No, he's, he's a little bit. So he's a little bit. Oh, he's I mean, a dope. maybe he's a little bit out of his. So he's a little bit out of his depth. Um, but this shouldn't be something that would be beyond him. You know. Um, yeah. I'm just yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. he's just doubling, tripling down on this. Is this right? You know. Right. Well, it's, I mean, it's okay to say, listen, I, I I can't prove this. This is just one hypothesis, and just deal with the arguments but once you start going down the persecution road that's yeah, yeah that's, that's a problem. big red flag that is the problem snake. and that's where a, a skeptical a critical thinking skill set would have served him extremely well yes mm -hmm. and that oh could God, be yes. his undoing. that's the piece that's missing. could be his undoing yeah